Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't have to, and today we are talking about how I have consistently predicted the stock market and made loads of money off of these predictions, and how you can do this exact same strategy to do the exact things that I do. This also comes from many years in the market, going to business school, studying financial markets, as well as investor psychology. So as we progress and go through these many videos, I will tell you how I successfully predicted what would happen for these various various stocks or the overall stock market. And we're going to start off with the Robinhood IPO because I predicted on July 22nd of 2021 that Robinhood would absolutely crash and it would crash very hard. My evidence for this is the videos that I have already created. So let's give it a listen. And instead of watching the entire video, which you can do on your own time for all of these different instances, I just want to highlight a couple portions of the video that convey my thoughts about the stock and how I knew this would actually happen. So with that being said, let's give it a quick listen. Later, we will also discuss why I believe the IPO of Robinhood stock will crash and burn, which is why it may not be the best time to invest into it initially or even at all for that matter. So I said that you should not invest in a Robinhood stock and I elaborate on this throughout the entire video about how the IPO is going to crash extremely hard. This is also echoed at the end of the video at around 7 minutes and 5 seconds, so let's also listen to that portion. After their IPO, where the stock is overly expensive and overpriced, it will have to come back down eventually. Or even if the stock will get shorted into oblivion and crash, which is what I think will happen. At the time of this initial public offering, Robinhood really did a scummy thing involving AMC shares and GME shares by stopping the trading of these stocks. And I knew that this would not sit well with Reddit or retail investors, so this is why I thought that the stock price would initially run up and then crash, because on top of that, Normal IPOs tend to do that exact same thing. And again, I made this video on July 22nd of 2021, but sadly it didn't get many views, which is another reason I'm making this video, because some of my predictions go unnoticed. Just like I mentioned in the video, the Robinhood stock could see many people buying it up as soon as it IPO'd, which would cause the stock price to skyrocket to around $70, and we will see the same thing happen when I talk about Rivian stock later on in the video. However, I started to short this stock despite what analysts were saying, because I knew that due to retail investors and how they are viewing Robinhood stock and various other reasons that the stock was going to start to trend down. So from $70 per share all the way to what it currently trades at right now at around $13 per share, if you were shorting the stock, you have made loads of money if you actually listened to the video and how I predicted that the stock price would absolutely crash for this particular stock. Now, this is not saying that I can predict every single stock or IPO. This is just saying at this particular time, I was confident enough to actually put some money behind my words in this video. This video was created either less or exactly a week before the initial public offering of HOOD, ticker name Hood stock, and that was on July 28th to July 29th is when it actually debuted on the NASDAQ for about $38 to $35 per share. The current HOOD stock currently trades for around $13. The low-end analyst price prediction for the stock is $15. The average price consensus among analysts is $30. $35.80, and the high-end price target is $84.20. So again, analysts are very bullish on the stock. However, I was not bullish because of various factors that I got from the news. Now I want us to move on to Nano Dimension and how I predicted that Nano Dimension would be added to ARK's new ETF, specifically their ARKX ETF. But I didn't just predict that only Nano Dimension would be added to the new ARKX ETF. I also said that Stratasys, Nano Dimension, 3D Systems and Proto Labs would all be added to this ETF, and if you don't want to believe me, just listen to this. Arks ARKX ETF. In the number one spot, we have Stratasys. In the number two spot, we have Nano Dimension. In the number three spot, we have 3D Systems. And in the number four spot, we have Proto Labs. To me, those are the most likely to be added to the new ARK ETF due to their connections in aerospace and defense, which I have listed above. Now, I want you to remember the order that I actually put these stocks in because I was like, first, Stratasys is definitely going to be added, followed by Nano Dimension, then 3D Systems, and then a Proto 
Proto Labs. And again, this was created on February 3rd of 2021, and the new ARKX ETF was not officially released until March 30th of 2021, which was ARK Space Exploration and Innovation ETF. And naturally, because it's in this video, I was correct. If we go over to the ARKX ETF and their holdings, we can see at number two is the 3D printing ETF. So she literally added another ETF into this ETF. So this begs the question, what is in the PRNT ETF? Well, if we go over to the stocks that are placed at number two in this other ETF, we can see that we have Stratasys, Protolabs, 3D Systems, and Nano Dimension. The only problem with this is that this company ended up messing it up. Otherwise, I would have been almost right on the dot with Stratasys being weighted higher than all of the other 3D printing stocks. And the only thing where I messed up is Protolabs and Nano Dimension would need to switch places. So it would go Stratasys, Nano Dimension, 3D Systems, and then Protolabs, which is exactly how I had it right here in those individual rankings for the ARKX ETF. So again, this was another very successful prediction. So while the first prediction, I mainly predicted it successfully for Robinhood's IPO based off of the latest news surrounding a stock and what the company had previously done because I knew that they had very bad PR at the time of this IPO for Hood stock. However, this one I knew from studying ARK Invest and their favorite companies because ARK Invest has consistently invested into all of these companies. So I knew these companies would be a shoe in to be added to the ARKX ETF. So the first one was from studying news and the PR and public relations of a company before they IPO. And this one, I got to predict it because of how well I know ARK Invest and Kathy Wood's investing style. But what about a cryptocurrency such as Dogecoin? What would I do then? How did I predict that Dogecoin would also crash? And this was before it even peaked at its all-time highs, and we will get more into that in a second. I made this video back on April 20th of 2021, and I predicted that Dogecoin would crash, so let's listen to the video to see exactly what I said. Now, normally stocks and cryptocurrencies like to run up in price before a catalyst, then on the catalyst day or after the catalyst, the stock or crypto tends to pull back, and I think this will happen with Dogecoin. We can see when I made the video that the stock originally pulled back right after that video, even though at the time it was very close to all-time highs at this level. Dogecoin ended up pulling back a little bit before skyrocketing. However, it soon had a complete reversal and absolutely dumped from its all-time high at the tippy top of this peak all the way to its currently priced at around 15 cents per Dogecoin. I knew this because this is just classic cryptocurrency psychology here. We went up to an all-time high, we pulled back to just surge higher, and then from the higher surge, we can see a gigantic dump. Now, this is not to say that it couldn't rally again sometime in the future. It just means for the short term that I easily predicted about what was going to happen to this cryptocurrency. But now I want to go to another example of an IPO, and that would be the Rivian IPO. And I made this video right when people were just speculating about Rivian having an IPO back in July 22nd of 20. 2021. Rivian currently trades at $64 per share. Their ticker symbol is RIVN. The analyst price target for the stock for the average price target is $133. The low end price target is $90 and the high end price prediction is $170 per share. However, how did I successfully predict what would happen to Rivian in this video? Well, let's take a listen. At the start of most IPOs, there is major volatility where either the stock sinks right off the bat or it surges and then falls down weakly later. And this is just classic IPO market psychology, which we saw kind of in the Robinhood stock price of it initially popping and then downtrending. And this is exactly what we're seeing with Rivian as well. As you can see from the stock, it IPO'd at around $100 per share. It popped in the beginning. And then ever since it hit that all-time high of around $172, it has been downtrending. Now, what's funny about this is this is the exact opposite of my take on Robinhood stock, even though the same thing happened for this company. I am bullish on Rivian over the long term. However, I go on to mention in that video that I'm not going to invest into Rivian off of the IPO. I'm going to wait for the stock to pull back before I end up investing into it. So let me see if I can find that part of the video. However, with that being said, Rivian's IPO is a very high profile initial public offering, and it's a stock that can appreciate well into the future. Even though I'm super excited, I personally will wait until Rivian either 
becomes profitable or if the price falls to a point where I can't refuse but to buy it. So basically I'm saying the IPO was extremely hot, it's way too high to buy right now and I'm gonna wait for it to cool off and soon if it drops to around $50 I'm definitely gonna buy Rivian stock but who knows if it will find a bottom at 50 it might find a bottom before then or even after then we're just gonna have to wait and see for that. Now I want to go over to Lucid Group and my prediction for the CCIV stock which is a SPAC. Now SPACs are slightly different than IPOs in both functionality and how market psychology works for various investors. We've already seen two IPOs, one from Robinhood and one from Rivian, and how I correctly predicted what would happen in both cases, but a SPAC is a little different in the case of you can have way more hype in a SPAC because SPACs were the talk of the town in the investment community. Lucid Group, ticker symbol LCID, currently trades for around $37 right now. The low end price target is $16. The average price prediction among analysts is $42.75 and the high end price target is $60 per share. I made this video back on January 18th of 2021 and we will skip to 5 minutes and 39 seconds. But I think that it's an easy assumption that CCIV stock price will explode like most other SPAC stocks upon an official acquisition announcement. The reason I said it and phrased it that way is because at the recording of that video, we didn't know if Lucid was actually going to accept the SPAC offer and be listed on the public stock market. It was just speculation at this time. There were only talks going on, but I was very confident that one, it was going to go through, so I successfully predicted that the deal would end up going through, and two, I also predicted what would happen to the stock price for this very high profile and highly anticipated SPAC. If we go over to the Lucid graph over here, you can see that I was abundantly right, and it surged all the way up to over $60 at its highest 52 week point. So this was another successful run and trade for a very high profile stock. Now I do want to highlight a time where I was very wrong in one of my predictions. I ended up splitting my bets between two companies, so I did make money overall on the deal. However, other people could have got caught up very negatively, and that's when I covered Workhorse. I thought Workhorse was going to get the United States Postal Service contracts to make electric vehicles for the USPS. However, I was wrong and they ended up not receiving that contract which would have been billions of dollars in their pocket, which would have caused the stock price to absolutely explode. However, the price did surge from a penny stock all the way up to $40, so if you were trading Workhorse in this time, you would have made out very largely. However, I personally did not. I thought they were going to go even higher than this, and then I was going to sell at the very top. But I was correct, because proper risk management says for us not to only invest into one company, we would want to do proper risk management and invest into a plethora of different different companies, especially companies that are also running for the USPS contract, which is why I split my position between Workhorse and Oshkosh Group. I did about a 50-50 split, so it didn't matter which company ended up winning the United States Postal Service contract, I was going to get good gains out of it. So although I was wrong about the overall prediction, I still made money from this. Just listen to what I said about Oshkosh in this video. So let's take a listen. Last video, I explained that it's really good that Workhorse Group has made it into the top three companies that are still being considered for the United States Postal Service contract. The three teams that are currently still in the running are Carson, Workhorse, and Oshkosh Corporation. Because a couple of weeks ago, Mahindra dropped out. And this is good news, but I want to focus in on Workhorse's competition in this lineup, specifically Oshkosh Corporation, which is a military vehicle maker that has ties with the Ford Motor Company. Oshkosh Corporation is by far Workhorse's number one competitor because they are larger, they are more stable financially, they have more factories, they can manufacture the postal service vehicles more efficiently, and Workhorse only has one manufacturing plant compared to Oshkosh's many manufacturing plants. Not to mention that Ford is a more well-known American name that also fits the manufacturing requirements that this contract has. Also, they have more resources at their disposal compared to Workhorse. And those are the reasons why I ended up splitting my money 50-50 between Workhorse and Oshkosh Group. So although Workhorse did not work out, and I would admit I was wrong about Workhorse, I could have sworn Workhorse was going to be the winner, but due to proper risk management, I split my bets and I hedged my bets and invested into two companies that were both running for the USPS contract. So this way I would win either way. And for the company that didn't win, I could either hold for a long-term position 
position or I could just sell the stock. In conclusion, let's do a quick summary. Rule number one, no one can predict the stock market and if anyone says that they can, they are trying to sell you something. Rule number two, for each one of these examples, among a plethora of other ones, I used a different strategy or different knowledge to determine or make a very educated guess on what was going to happen to the stock. For the Robinhood IPO, it was that the company had very poor public relations at the time of their initial public offering. For Nano Dimension being added along with a plethora of other 3D printing stocks to the ARK ARKX ETF, I knew how ARK Invest and how Kathy Wood invests and operates. For Dogecoin, I just know market psychology for various cryptocurrencies and I used that to establish and understand what was going to happen with Dogecoin. For Rivian, Rivian was a classic IPO where it would pump in the beginning to all-time highs and then it would slowly trail off until it finds a bottom and then from that bottom that's when the company actually is a good investment opportunity and good value. For CCIV, we used our historical data because SPAC companies were very hot and they were an extremely hot topic and the talk of the town when the SPAC came out so naturally we knew that it was going to surge based off of investors hype and we could see some post catalyst cooling off. So that's how we could successfully predict what happened to Lucid. Lastly for Workhorse, it teaches us good risk management to hedge our bets among multiple companies. So although Oshkosh ended up winning the US Postal Service contract, I still made loads of money off of this deal, despite me initially thinking that only Workhorse was going to win. But this is just proper risk management to hedge your bets. But I want to hear your thoughts. Comment your thoughts down below. Remember to smash the like button on this video for more videos like this one. Subscribe if you are new and I will see you in the next YT video.